I thought we were the protectors of truth. Democrats, Republicans, you all lie. We, a small band of survivors, are on our way to the Steel City to find the resistance. Join us. Welcome to the Steel City Resistance with Senior Airman Ward Miller and the ironclad voice of Pittsburgh Hutch Jr. laying down verbal C4 to blow away the lies and the political tomfoolery. Your papers have been cleared. Welcome to the Steel City Resistance. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Steel City Resistance. My name is Hutch Jr., and I am located in the city of Pittsburgh, deep, deep down in the bunker. And I'm Ward Miller, also in the city of Pittsburgh, here on Mission Control. And this week was, there wasn't a lot of really big news, just, you know, there was a couple big stories. You know, it, it, I mean, we've had those other weeks where we're just so slammed with stuff to talk about that we're like, oh, my goodness, it's just, you know, this week, the, I mean, the, the stories are in-depth and, and they're deep. You know, don't don't get me wrong. It's not like we, you know, we sloughed off or anything. No, no, we were, we were hard at work, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, I guess there, it, we're in a, a kind of a, a place in history uh, where everybody's a little bit on edge and everybody's eager to report this and report that and there's an opportunity for uh i don't know misinformation to get out there and, and it's not necessarily uh, somebody's fault you know it's not necessarily uh on purpose but uh we're gonna be careful we're gonna we're, we're gonna we're thinking a lot of things and and, and following a lot of things up uh, but we're not necessarily going to report them right away because there's been several instances lately uh, where some stories kind of got legs and they didn't necessarily need to, and we're going to go into that uh, as soon as we start the portion of the show, that uh, the hard news portion. But uh, I don't know if you noticed that, Ward, but there's a whole bunch of stories getting turned around, and it's something else. Yeah, um, and we've we've fallen victim to it. I mean, it's it's not that that we try and report stuff that we don't believe or you know, the, that we make up and think we might be able to corroborate. A lot of times what will happen is we'll find a story, and I'll find the story, and then Hutch finds the story and go, well, they sound the same. So we run with them, and, um, you know, just to find out later that, that that wasn't necessarily true. And that's kind of what happens when you have, you know, when it's a two-guy show and we don't have a staff to vet all the stuff that we're going to talk about. Um, so... You know, just bear with us. We we don't like to uh, report a non-truth, uh, whether it's, you know, makes the right wing look good or the left wing look bad or whatever your case, you know, whatever your the point of view you may have is. Uh, that's that's not our intent because, the you know, it, then we fall into the same place that the mainstream media is at where exactly. we're lying, uh, you know, just – just to cover our, our own party's butt or whatever. Uh, and we want, we want it to be uh, very objective. So if, if we have, and, and we've done it before on the show, where we've reported stuff that, that we thought was true, and then on second blush, you know, it, it gets proven as wrong. We're we're the first ones to say, whoa, we said it and it was wrong. Yeah, and unfortunately, I mean, we can't, we, we've stopped trusting uh, the media that do have the large staffs, and a lot of their staffs are uh, actually shrinking because the country is starting to understand that they're not credible anymore, and therefore they're uh, uh, losing revenue. I mean, and that's that's a good thing. I mean, every time you see it all all the time, and I re, I retweet it every time too. I mean, it's a good story, but we have to rely sometimes on operations that aren't as deep either, and a lot of them we've we've been able over the years. Uh, to kind of filter through them as far as uh, credibility. And we, we've been able to, to find some credible sources, but every now and then they're aggregating also, and they'll pick up stories that aren't necessarily uh, well-vetted or, or multiple-sourced or things like that. So like Ward said, just hang with us, and, and we'll uh, do the best we can here. We know we're giving you better content than you can get on the networks. Yeah, and like like I said, 
any time that we we if we are to report something that is a falsehood, uh, you know, usually we get called out and and we'll respond. Uh, you know that that we made a mistake or that it was reported incorrectly, and we will we will correct it. Um, at the same time, you know, because we can't rely on a lot of the mainstream sources, we end up relying on stuff that we're finding on the internet. And anybody who knows anything about the internet knows that people on the internet aren't tend to lie so <laughs> we kind of got to figure out what signs right you know and if we can find you know three or four stories that corroborate what the initial story was we can try and run with it um and, and that's what that's one of the uh the challenges that that face us um every week because we're trying to give you people the the best stories that we can find and and the most uh truthful stories we can find and you know that that's not always uh, not always the case. And like I said, we do the best we can, and we're going to bring you uh, a far better product. We're not we're never going to lie to you for one thing. That, that's that's no. that's a promise from the show. I mean, that's not going to happen. Uh, now I've been noticing something word that's that's rather disturbing, uh, and it, it seems to be growing. Uh, it's in this country. It's much more prevalent in Europe. Uh, it's all over the Middle East. But this anti-Semitism. Uh, this this sudden shift back to uh, blaming Jews and Israelis for every single thing under the sun. I mean, the whole centerpiece of the Hegel uh, controversy was was his feelings and his uh, remarks, comments about Israel and and the Jewish lobby and things like that. Uh, but it's getting very dangerous for Jews to live in Europe. And and, and the problem is, is that if you look back at history, and you look at the early 30s. And you look at some of the election results in Italy and, and, and different countries in Europe, and you look at some of the uh, uh, economic situations in that time frame and what gave gave rise to the uh, anti-Semitic tragedy that happened later on in the 30s and 40s, uh, there's vast and, and, and really shocking similarities. Oh, yeah. And, in fact, there's some, uh, there's some, there were some reports that came out this week it was either this week or last week um, that these uh, actual Holocaust scholars. Did you see that? I did. That where did they come to find out that it was way worse than they initially thought, and that more people were actually killed, and and it was more gruesome and disgusting than you know than than uh, than has ever been reported. You know, uh, so. I mean, there was many more ghettos than they originally thought. There was many more uh, work camps and different things of that nature. Uh, it, they actually plotted a map out of Europe, and, and initially it was thought that there was, you know, some concentration camps and things like that, but apparently there's just the infrastructure is much higher than, than they thought originally. Yeah. Did you know that initially uh, – that was one of the original uses of uh, IBM. No, I didn't. Yeah, they actually created the uh, the database. I believe it, and I, I mean that's what they're doing now. The uh, I think the the uh, uh, museum in Washington D.C. I think the foundation or the organization that runs that is who's doing the research. And evidently, they're going through like thousands and thousands of, of records uh, to try to, to get this in its entirety. And it needs to be posted in its entirety. I mean, I I have not, there's no doubt in my mind that if the records were just in paper or, or they could be seized or destroyed, that there's people on this planet that would try to erase that from our history. And, and I mean that sincerely. And, and thank goodness that General Eisenhower had the foresight to realize that himself. And he ensured that every single square inch of every camp that they found was documented on film and is in the archives in Washington, D.C. And it's also on our website. You can see some of it. Because there's no doubt. I mean, there's you just can't make that shit up, man. I mean, you know, it's right yeah. in front of you. Yeah, it, it, it's... And what really bothers me is you have these... There's not more of a, I guess the word is outcry, for lack of a better word. 
that, you know, you got guys like I Need a Dinner Jacket who are saying that the Holocaust never happened. And yet we've seen um, footage uh, of, you know, people in these concentration camps that are just emaciated, you know, tattoos on their arms, tattoos with their number on the arm and everything. Yeah, the whole nine yards. And, and for for this waste of human flesh, waste of good oxygen, he is he is our Wogo of the week. Uh, the, for him to say that this never happened and to deny the Holocaust is beyond the pale. There's nothing uh, that can be said other than, you know, you got to be kidding me. I know. How unreal. can you be the leader of a country and deny that the Holocaust ever I mean, the 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 evidence is overwhelming. I mean, the physical there, there's evidence. Absolutely, yeah, there's physical evidence. There's, I mean, there's people in this in, in this country who still have the tattoos on their forearms. You know, from from concentration camps. I mean, you know, it wasn't like they all packed up and said, "Well, I'm going to Israel." Uh, some of them, you know, came to the United States. I mean, and there's people in the United States with the same tattoos. That, that were given by the Nazis and, and for, you know, for, for the uh, president of a country to say that it never happened is... It's bizarre. Be, it's beyond disgusting. Yeah, it is. I mean, and they had part in it. You know, the, we've, yeah, we've, talked absolutely. To, we've talked about that several times. Uh, they, were, they were part and parcel and would have continued it had Hitler been more successful in the Middle East, and, and who knows what would have happened if, if that occurred. Uh, I guess we just have to be on guard to not let it happen again. Now, one of the things that baffles me is American Jews and their lack of give a shit. I mean, there's some that do, but like you said, where's the outcry? You know, with the whole, I don't see how in the current configuration, especially of our foreign policy, I don't see how one American Jew is a Democrat. I just can't fathom it. I can't believe it. It's suicidal. Uh, please, somebody call and, and explain. You know, get, send us an email and tell me why American Jews are voting for people like Barack Obama and Chuck Hagel. I mean, it just blows me away. There's no uh, no explanation I can think of. Uh, unless, no rhyme nor reason. Unless they they haven't been taught or their parents aren't stressing enough what did happen, uh, and, and they just think it could never happen again. Or I don't know what the deal is, but. Uh, you need to wake the hell up. I mean, you're you're a voting block that Obama counts on, and, and you deliver all the time. It's unbelievable. And and the thing that gets me is, I mean, just take this last one, race for example. You know, going into the election, Obama. I mean, well, for the past four years, four and a half now, Obama still has yet to go to Israel. Uh, the you know he. he he couldn't meet with Netanyahu when he came here. Instead, he went golfing. Or no, he was campaigning, excuse me. What, like there's a difference. You know, the, the, the president of our closest ally in the Middle East says, hey, I want to have a sit-down, and, and you can't be bothered to spend the time? And he facilitates the takeover of Morsi, a Muslim brotherhood who is his own, his own director of national intelligence says is a secular organization that's not prone to violence. I mean, this is a this is freaking Alice in Wonderland here. Well, and there's another one. Morrissey's another one who who's a, a Holocaust denier too. Absolutely. And what do we do with him? We send him F-16s and M1A1 tanks, and money, the money to pay for him. I mean, it's it's just uh, tons of money. This has got to stop. And and, and I mean, uh, I'm at a loss for words. I mean, every time I start thinking about this, all the different things. Uh, I mean, it's just, uh, it boggles the mind. It really does. It's something that, uh, it's dangerous. It's not being talked about enough. Benghazi, they got away with Benghazi. They got away with Fast and Furious. These people are above the law, ladies and gentlemen. What do you think happens when we have a situation like that? I mean, we have a media that's not a media. Well, I mean, the, the thing is, why doesn't anybody call them out? You know, I mean, you got us doing it, but, I mean, who the hell are we, Right. right. We're a couple couple guys from Pittsburgh who who once a week get on get on the uh, internets and, and 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 try and bring light to something that the mainstream media should be doing that there should be an outcry and you know you the the um 
you know, I, I don't know what word I'd use. The, 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 the Republicans out there say, well, Fox News is trying, and Fox News, Fox News ain't doing shit. Right. That's absolutely right. You know, I, I'm not a Fox News apologist or anything like that. I'm telling you point blank that Fox News didn't isn't saying nothing about Benghazi. They, They've said more than the others, but that isn't that doesn't take a lot. They danced around the edges uh, on these issues. Uh, I, I, like I said, Brett Bear is the best in the business. The problem is the business. You know, it's yeah. it, it's just a shame. Now, and I just. Uh, so you people don't take that the wrong way. Uh, we're just a couple guys, but we appreciate you. We know oh, we, we know we have an audience, and it's not giant, but it's substantial, and uh, it gets bigger as we go. Uh, so we do appreciate no, you. No, I, I never I never meant to slight our audience. I know. I, I just had I, to say I, that. Yeah, th 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 I'm glad you pointed that. Out. No, I, I never mean to slight our audience. I, I meant to slight the the fact that that there's no one, no one in the mainstream media willing to take on the issues that, that we talk about from week to week. And true, that goes that includes Fox News. That includes, you know, the Clinton News Network. That includes all of them. If any of them really, really want to succeed, if they really want to get their feet under them and kick the shit out of everybody else, here, let me let me give you a quick hint. Here's all you gotta do. Tell the goddamn truth. That's it. If you get up on it's your soapbox simple. and you start telling the truth, you My know, the truth will set you free. You will be the number one news source in the country. Yeah. If you if you just go up and you stand up to to uh, the this the socialist and and socialist is being nice in the White House. Communist is is closer to the mark. And the fact that he's controlling the media and he decides what the media says and the media makes edits to make him look good and the media makes edits to make his wife look intelligent, <laughs> the fact that they're doing that shit tells me they're in the bed for this guy. They're not telling you the truth. If, if, if Laura Bush had done what, what uh, Michelle Obama did on Good Morning America, that clip would have been played ad nauseum forever and yeah. nobody would and everybody would have been like oh and it's hey, sickening it's sickening I, I don't see how they go go home at night and, and kiss their kids good night i mean i really don't i mean no. they're such prostitutes and that's what it is they're prostitutes there's no other way to no other way to say it they're selling themselves to the to the president and that, that's sickening it's it's really terrible uh, i'm gonna take something out of out of uh, order here uh if you want to fox news hey, listen up sean hannity Bill O'Reilly, Greta Van Susteren, you want to report something the right way? Report about CPAC and how CPAC has been infiltrated by the Muslim Brotherhood. Investigate Grover Norquist and Khan, the Sutan Khan, Khan, the guy he brought in to the Bush administration and ended up being the transportation secretary or some such, and, and find out why Pamela Geller is not welcome at CPAC. Do that. Go, go investigate that and let us let the, let the country know that CPAC has been infiltrated along with the rest of uh, the leftist side of the government, because the, the, these people are they're insidious. They're in every every facet. They're in the national security infrastructure. They're in the homeland security. They're everywhere. And Michelle Bachman and, and Peter K is a Peter King, the one from New York. I mean, they try to hold hearings on this, and they're just excoriated. From, from the right and the left, John McCain, for him to knock Michelle Bachman for asking, just asking for an investigation. Where is Huma Abedin? I want to know where she is. I want to know where that lady is. Because she's in the shadows somewhere, and she needs to be flushed out. I mean, this is the same situation we were in with Alger Hiss in uh, the Roosevelt administration. And they're denying it and denying it. And I just hope it's not too late when they're forced to confront it. Well, the thing is, they're no, how are they going to get forced? Well, some, cha uh, some, changes, forced? Are, some changes the, are going to have to be made. I mean, The thing is, the, the, the people don't care. The, the, for the most part, the, the American people are happy because the news tells them all is well. You know, well, you and just, I know that that's not going to last forever. Here. That's not going to last forever. You and I both know that. I, I honestly hope so because I'm, I mean right now that's what it is. It's the guy from Animal House going, "Nothing to see here. All is well. Move along. You Move just, along. You, all you, is well." You just hope that the American people are smart enough to know 
that when the dollar is devalued, you hope it's not devalued by a power of 10. You know, you hope it's devalued just enough to, to get people's attention that we can pull ourselves out of this. But the danger is it could snowball and the whole bottom could fall out. Yep. And that's the part that you have to be worried about. And that's well, the part where, where the newsmen get strung up. They get lynched. The well, day that I mean, that's the thing, and that's what's happening right now, and nobody's paying attention. You know, when, when you have the the amount of people on um, on welfare, on unemployment, with no end in sight, no plan for an end in sight, you know, the, the president said during his reelection, jobs are my number one priority. <laughs> And his number one priority still has not been addressed, but yet he was able to go play golf with Tiger Woods. That's unreal. I mean, and, and the other thing about the administration, and not just the president, the agency heads and everybody in this administration, the complete and consistent and repeated failure for anyone at the top to take responsibility for any goddamn thing. They have not taken responsibility for any of this mess. Hillary Clinton didn't do it. Janet Napolitano didn't do it. President Obama didn't do it. Eric Holder didn't do it. They all are completely void of any responsibility, Gene. I mean, that, that's just something else right there. I mean, in every instance, it goes all the way to the top and nothing happens. They're above the law completely. And the media is going to be right in the next cell, I'm telling you. Well, there, you know, as we were talking, uh, a new uh, headline just popped on Drudge, which is sequester jester. Carrie hands out $250 million to Egypt. <laughs> it's unbelievable. The, the what, sequester <laughs> went into effect midnight Friday, right? This is unreal. So we're not, even, we're not even three days into it, and he's given away $250 million to a country that doesn't like us. And 800,000 Department of Defense civilian employees are going to get sequestered one day a week. You know, so that's really, or one day a pay period, rather. You know, it, the thing is, it, instead of instead of coming out and saying, well, number one, the, the, the White House, this was their idea. The, you know, Obama's trying to blame the Republicans somehow because he was the one who brought it, who put sequestration on the table during the debt ceiling talks. Yeah, his his assistant, Jack Lew, who we just made the Secretary of the Treasury Senate. Thank you very much, Republicans in the Senate. You did good. Uh, you just made the guy that invented and writ, wrote the sequester verbiage, Jack Lew, into the new Treasury Secretary, and you didn't even make Geithner pay his back taxes yet. So you're doing great up there in the Senate. Outstanding. Well, what do you expect? You know, the, 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 this is from the, the same uh, same band that played the tune, We Ain't Gonna Pass No Budget. Yeah. And, and they haven't for the, well, for four and a half years since Obama took office, there has yet to be a budget passed through the Senate. Uh, so I don't understand how they can say, well, sequestration is going to knock $85 billion out of the projected spending. How can you have projected spending when you don't have a budget? It's bizarre. It really is. Uh, the whole thing. Now, last week, this is a little off, but it's it's this is the platform I'm going to use. Last week, I uh, made a mistake, ladies and gentlemen. I was on Facebook, and uh, I supported, through my support behind Democrat, City of Pittsburgh Democrat Bill Peduto for mayor. And in the interim period, I have been counseled on several occasions by several listeners of this show and others on what a mistake that was. And upon further review, at the risk of looking like John Effingham Carey, I'm going to flip-flop and remove my support for Bill Peduto. So Jennifer and Michael and the rest of you that got on me and, and brought me back to my senses, I'm going to have used your counsel and making that decision, and I have been also informed that another friend of the show who will not be named at this time, because I haven't had a chance to talk to him about it subsequently, is thinking about running as a Republican uh, for the mayor of the city of Pittsburgh, and we know what an uphill fight that is, 
but I cannot in good conscience support a progressive, even though I like the guy. Uh, I, I thought about it, and uh, some things were brought to my attention, and, and I was reminded of some things that, that had been done, and uh, good charm just can't overcome that. And I apologize for my errant ways, but I guess this happens every now and then, Ward. Yeah, I mean, the the thing is, and that's what I really like about doing this show, is we're not afraid to say we made a mistake, you know, and everybody makes mistakes. M mistakes are part of being human. The, the trick is to make your mistake, then learn from it and move on. So this was a learning experience for Hutch. Hutch <laughs> learned that, you know, maybe he shouldn't have thrown his support behind a specific uh, person without doing his homework. <laughs> I, 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 I made a decision based on other than philosophical means. I made it on personal relationship type of uh, vibes and, and uh, wrong thing to do, and I know better. Yeah, well, I, I mean, knew it as soon as I pushed the key. I knew I was wrong. Yeah. You know, it was one of those deals. But then again, there, there, there's times where I'll I'll post stuff just to see what I can get. You uh, know, it's like, well, is uh, you know, is, is somebody paying attention? Uh, you know, and and I do that a lot. I mean, you know, a lot of it's not done with the show. I do it on my own um, through Twitter and whatnot, and I'll post stuff just to see what kind of response I get. You know, and see, it's like the response said a lot too, because he, he he didn't want to be anywhere near associated with me. He didn't even answer it. He didn't even comment nothing. So I know what that means, you know, and that's fine. So I'm still in good standing. <laughs> <laughs> Until he hears the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He'll never listen to the show, so it doesn't. Ladies and gentlemen, your monthly jihad report for February 2013: 174 jihad attacks. 22 countries against five different religions, 1,059 dead bodies, 1,515 critically injured. The religion of peace, ladies and gentlemen, one body at a time. Now, the first story, Ward, uh, came to me. I was getting increasingly nervous, and unfortunately, this story hasn't really had the penetration that the original story has had. And you still have Sarah Palin and others commenting on the huge ammunition purchases made by the uh, Department of Homeland Security. Uh, and unfortunately, that was one of the, these, this was one of those stories that somebody enthusiastically, uh, either that or, or this story I'm getting ready to quote, uh, which, uh, for me, being familiar with these types of things sounds legitimate, um, unless it's false. But I, when I saw the original story, let's just get into it. Did the Department of Homeland Security recently request to purchase 21,600,000 rounds of handgun ammo? On February 5th, the Department of Homeland Security issued a solicitation contract order for a commercial item for ammo to be purchased to deliver to DHS Federal Law Enforcement Training Center in New Mexico. And the ammunition being purchased is commercial lead training ammo. There are three components to this order, 40 caliber, 165 grain jacketed hollow point rounds, 9 mil, 115 grain jacketed hollow point rounds, and 9 mil, 124 grain ball ammunition, uh, which is uh, target ammunition. Or combat ammunition, too. Uh, the Blaze da, 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 claimed that DHS was adding 21 million rounds of ammo to the stockpile. Now, the purchase solicitation was reviewed and determined that these reports are wildly inaccurate. Section 20 of the solicitation, and I'm reading this because I want to put our audience at ease. Uh, Section 20 of the solicitation outlines schedule of supplies and services, which details the purchase for each of the three components. The first two components, 40 cal and 9 mil hollow point, specify 100,000 rounds to be priced per 1,000 rounds. The third component, 9 mil ball ammo, specifies 40,000 rounds to be priced per 1,000 rounds. The incorrect calculations that brought reporters to the 21 million number looks like this. 
40 cal, 100,000 rounds times 100 quantities equals 10 million rounds. 9 mil, 100,000 rounds times 100 quantities equals 10 million rounds. 9 mil ball, 40,000 rounds at 40 quantities, 1.6 million rounds, total 21.6 million rounds. The problem with the equation is that the wrong numbers were used to calculate the delivery. The error in reporting occurred because the authors mistakenly failed to recognize that the delivery was to be priced per 1,000 rounds. The correct calculation are 40 caliber, 100,000 rounds, 9 millimeter, 115 grain, 100,000 rounds, 9 millimeter, 124 grain ball, 40,000 rounds for a total of 240,000 rounds, which is much more reasonable, and this is why I'm saying that we got to be careful because everybody's on edge. Well, here's the problem I have with it. You know, because they're saying, they actually say in there, I'm looking for it now because you just read it, uh, basically that these rounds were going to be bought for training, right? Right. Right. Who trains with hollow points? And the only thing I can think about that is that they're doing some kind of ballistics or something, or I don't know. I, that that blows me away, too. That, that, that's but the even part if it, I don't understand. I can understand 40 caliber rounds, but I can't understand 40 caliber hollow points. Not for training. They're pro. Now, they're for pro training, it should all, if they would say that it was all, you know, ball, uh, ball rounds, I'm giddy up. That, that's what it's for. It's for training. But when you're saying that, that you know, at least half of this order is going to be for hollow point rounds, what, what exactly does the Department of Homeland Defense need 240 rounds for? The only thing I can think of is, is if they're, doing some kind of ballistics with the agents. And the only thing that, that's a little funny with that is I was in a mechanized infantry, and we never did any shit like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, well, the United States is, Army. And another question would be, why are they buying rounds? Because the, the, the uh, Border Patrol, does the Border Patrol fall under Homeland Defense? Yes. Does it? I think. A whole lot of stuff falls under Homeland Defense that didn't used to. Okay, uh, uh, I'm I'm not I'm not positive on that. I, I'm guessing. I'm just asking the question. If anybody out there knows, let us know. Uh, but anyway, it's just uh, it was good to see that that uh, I mean that was out of out of control. Twenty one million rounds. I mean that was yeah. that, that was just uh, that was that was scary. That's how bad that was. I mean that was like there was enough uh, enough lead to put five bullets in every citizen. Yeah. If you added not just those up, but all the all the rest of the purchases and things like that. Uh, yeah, wow. Now, some other interesting things have occurred. Uh, if you recall, back in the 70s, when Bob Woodward and somebody Bernstein, I forget his first name, but when they outed President Nixon and his whole uh, G. Gordon Liddy and Haldeman and Ehrlichman, and I mean, we grew up watching cartoons and that. I mean, you know, that was on TV every night, you know, the, all that stuff. And, and, and uh, Bob Woodward was pr pretty much, he's still on the scene. And he's, uh, he up until last week, he was like the dean of the liberal media. And then he wrote a book. And it just went downhill for him from there. Yeah, because he basically came out and said that Obama's decision not to deploy a carrier was a kind of madness. Uh, Woodward blasted Obama on Wednesday morning for deciding to recall an aircraft carrier from the Persian Gulf because of the impending budget cuts, calling the decision a kind of madness. Woodward said, and I quote, Can you imagine Ronald Reagan sitting there saying, Oh, by the way, I can't do this because of some budget document, or George W. Bush saying, You know, I'm not going to evade Iraq because I can't, Get the care, get the aircraft carriers I need, or even Bill Clinton saying, you know, I'm not going to attack Saddam Hussein's intelligence headquarters as he did when Clinton was president because of some budget document. Under the Constitution, the president is commander in chief and employs the force, and so we now have the president going out because of a piece of paper and disagreement. I can't do what I need to do to protect the country. That's a kind of madness we haven't seen in a long time. And after Woodward did this, he took all kinds of heat. Oh, they piled and, on. 
it. They, they and, and, it and it, that's the thing that gets me is instead of the media saying, you know what, we're going to rally behind the the guy, you know, this guy takes nine presidents. They had a chance to save their 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 legacy. They had one chance to save their legacy, and they blew it. Now the yeah. the big time guys, uh, to my knowledge, not that I watch them that much, but they didn't. Uh, they were kind of silent. It was the middle, the middle of the field, reporters. You know, the mid level haven't really made it that that well yet. They're they're the one. They were calling them liars, and wanting them to die. And and it's just uh, the left is unhinged. Well, in, in fact, uh, Woodward went on to. Um went on to a couple talk shows and said that the, that the White House went as far as to threaten them. Yeah, yeah. The, I can't remember the name of the guy right now, but one of the heavyweights inside the White House uh, told him he better, he's going to wish he didn't make that stand, you know. And it, it's just, uh, I don't know, it, it's something else. It's it's unreal. I mean, and he was basically saying that, that Obama's the one that came out with the sequester, too. That was another component uh, of what he said that, that really uh, annoyed the Marxists in the in the media, you know, the Obama media. Yeah, you might as well just say that they work for the White House. Uh, it'd be it'd be bad. Could you imagine having to be a journalist right now? Like you studied your whole life, and everything you did was uh, you know geared toward that. And this is the this is the crew that you're in with. This is going to be your legacy, uh, unless you break through, and you can't really break through because you'll get fired. Well, th- th- I don't know if I put that story in there. Uh, there was a girl from CNN. Did I put that story in here? I don't think. Uh, I thought I I was going to. Anyway, there was a girl from CNN who had basically outed them, and and that's and she basically said what Hutch just said. She said, you know, I went to school to learn how to be a true journalist, not this yellow journalism. Oh, it's that they do. suck, man. And she she came out and said, you know, we were told what stories we had to write, how to write them, how to spin them so that the White House looked as good as they could possibly look. And she said that's garbage. And uh, she, we've said it before we, on this show. You have to, if for this to work, you have to, you have to count the American people as stupid. You have to. I mean, because normal people watch this for a couple of days and go, "Oh hell no, you got to be kidding me, man!" Is it really? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Wait. Well, I mean, that that's the thing. And uh, I posted a thing on on our Facebook page today about that and it says you know people are always told you know everything that you see on the internet not it not you know none of it's true to yeah. yet believe everything you see on tv yeah and before i forget uh, on that piece that i did earlier about grover norquist and cpac go on the website there's a uh i don't know if it's a keynote but there's a speech by david horowitz from 2011 cpac where he outlines names and dates and things like that about Grover Norquist and how he needs to be him and David Keene and Suhail Kane Khan, how they need to really be outed, and, and we really need to get this this chapter of the Muslim Brotherhood the hell out of the conservative movement, and it explains a lot. I mean, Grover Norquist is a kingmaker, and, and it might explain why John McCain acted the way he did and Marco Rubio acted the way he did when Michelle Bachman and five other Congress people brought the petition or the letter to investigate the Muslim Brotherhood's uh, infiltration into different agencies because they're there uh, by name. I mean, do your own research. Uh, Speaking of Muslim Brotherhood, something that I can never understand, uh, Calypso Louis Farrakhan is back in the news. And and I just, uh, I can't understand that that many black people, American blacks, would sign on to an organization that would put them back in chains. Yeah, well, Louis, Louis Farrakhan, you know, and he's the the leader of the Nation of Islam. Um, you know, he was the one who basically had uh, Malcolm X killed. If not, uh, if not, did it himself. Yeah, I mean, he had him killed. Uh, he's now saying that gang members can serve as protectors. <laughs> And per- to help protect the nation of Islam, so you're going to take these gang bangers and, and give them, you know, weapons. Well, first they want to collectively own land, and I don't know if that means if that's like a that's like a communist thing, right? Where you collectively own land, yeah, and then you what surround the perimeter with these 
What are they? Are they jihadists or? Well, I, I, oh, the gangbangers. The mean, gang gang that, that's so, right. That's right. So they all have. Here's the thing, though. What's what would the difference be between them doing that and what happened at Waco? The difference would be is the Justice Department wouldn't do anything. Oh, uh, okay. That would be the difference. <laughs> that's right, because they weren't. Re- that they, they, they're not Christian. Yeah. That that have that are holding up the land and and are being surrounded by armed men with guns. Uh, <laughs> they they they're Muslims, so we really can't say nothing because that would be in, infringing on their civil liberties. I saw a uh, funny on Facebook today, one of those postcards, and it said, when's the last time you saw an atheist, an atheist sue a Muslim? <laughs> yeah, I posted that. Did you? <laughs> yeah. That was funny. <laughs> yeah, this, this Farrakhan, man, he's, uh, I'll tell you, that it's, it's bizarre, and he gets big crowds, too, man. There's a lot, well, of, he's he got, got a following. Here's the thing, though, what I don't understand, and, and I blame a lot of it on the fact that our leaders have no balls. None. I mean, when, when, you know, after the first Gulf War, Farrakhan takes off and goes to Iraq. And Libya. And Libya. And he hangs out with Saddam and Gaddafi. And nobody, you know, at that point, you, you know, you want to go hobnob with our enemy? That's great. That's up to you. But at that point, you lose your citizenship. You look at the last, the last paragraph of the story. This is him speaking. You killed my brother, Gaddafi. And now you got the same thing in your mind for me, Farrakhan thundered as the crowd rose to its feet, applauding. You want to put your hands on me. In fact, you're plotting as I'm speaking. This guy's a nut, man. Well, and they, I mean, they take that, him serious, too. There's like, he had a crowd full of people. Of course they did, because that's that's their M.O. You got to be the you got to be willing to be a martyr. Now, yeah. you don't got to go be the martyr. You gotta be willing to be the martyr. So you saying, so him going, okay, because they killed Gaddafi, they're Louis, you're 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 a piece of crap. You are. Nobody in this country even gives a damn about you. The only reason we've bothered to mention it on on our little show was the fact that we figured we'd mo- be able to mock you and make fun of you because the the simple idea of having a you know building your own little commune and then having it. You know, surrounded by <laughs> by gang members with weapons, yeah. and, and thinking that something good can come of that. The freaking um, weapons would be pointed in. Yeah. You know, uh, hey, before I forget, there's another video on the website, and I forget the guy's name, but you absolutely have to go watch this video. It's a guy, and and I put it on there, not condoning it, but you ought to see this black minister raising up about how to white people. Are not going to take it anymore. We're going to ride in the streets. I mean, you got to see this thing. It's something else. It's it's not derogatory. It, it's talking about Obama, and he even at the end has to mention Larry Sinclair. You know, it's pretty good. It's entertaining. But, I mean, the... <laughs> <laughs> I should have played a clip on here. <laughs> yeah. But uh, now here's a serious story that we got to cover, and I think this is why Ambassador Stevens was killed. Now the United States has, has, has broken cover here. We've taken the mask off a little bit, and overtly, we're going to send $60 million in aid to the Syrian rebels, which means we're sending it to the Muslim Brotherhood and Al-Qaeda. That's what that means. I mean, they're they're arresting Christians left and right, executing them. Uh, they're not good folks, man. We, we, we don't need to be even involved in either side of this struggle. Both sides are screwed up, and I, I just I think we should just... Uh, just disengage. I mean, I, I do. I, I don't see how you back either one of these sides and win. No. I just don't. No. Well, here's the thing. Now, if Jordan if Jordan wants to ask for our help, we could seal the border and try to save at least one secular country. But other than that, hey, you want a caliphate, have a caliphate. And, well, and I mean, that's, that's, that's really and that's, what you got. And that's the end of the food shipments and everything else. Well, I mean, th- once again, why are we sending why do we send money and food to people that hate us, let them. It's you know, nuts. It's cut, crazy. Cut them off. Let them hate us for free. That's right. It's, give them it's a nuts. reason to hate us. Shit. Th- this they is, hate us because we won't give them nothing. This is an area where I agree with libertarians. I think we should wash our hands of this, and I think that it's treasonous that we leave oil in the ground and we leave gas in the ground and we don't build a pipeline for some green asshole who, whose whose whole theory has been mispro- disproven, 
and, and who you can follow the money. I mean, the 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 accounting, the trials, the financial trials after this administration should be mind boggling. The well, did you see that there was they they just had a uh, they just did uh, they just released a report Friday that said that there is no uh, there will be no um, carbon impact of the Keystone Pipeline. The, the, I, I never actually understood. Not doing it will cause more of a carbon impact than doing it I because mean, it's they'll blatantly. have to ship the stuff through trucks, they'll have yeah. to ship it through trains, and they'll blow more carbon into the air than to have a pipeline that it all runs through. It has to be politically motivated. How does a freaking pipe impact any goddamn thing? It's a pipe. Yeah, well, you know, because, well, the thing is, you know, the, the, some caribou may not be able to migrate. If the, here, here's a little hint for Let you. Let the guys. caribou die. If, if the caribou's too fucking stupid That's to right. go over or under a pipe, then it deserves to die. That's a fact. Uh, yeah, that's something that this whole, uh, these last couple of years were not. The things America, stupid America will put up with is just uh, beyond anything. Now, the NRA, thank goodness for the NRA, by the way. Uh, if there wasn't an NRA, we'd already be toast. Oh, yeah. Uh, but they're using a justice menu, or memo. Apparently, there was a memo that was written uh, that says the gun control proposals are ineffective. I mean, the whole thing's a joke. And we've known this from the beginning, but uh, there are people out there that are low-information people that are scared of guns, afraid of them, and uh, they buy this stuff. Well, I mean, it's one of them cases where they think, well, we'll make it illegal and then nobody will have them. <laughs> that, that's worked really well with heroin and cocaine, right? Uh, they, they make them illegal and, and, you know, there's all kinds of stuff that's illegal out there, folks, and people get their hands on it every day. They're, I mean, Some of these states make, are I mean, taking it to the level of, of uh, communists, though. In Colorado, the way they're wording it, it's going to outlaw shotguns. Yeah, I mean, this, shotguns. this is bizarre shit. And, and, I mean, none of it is ever going to stand up in court. That's the thing that these people, uh, but then again, by the same token, we're one justice away from, from folding. We are one Supreme Court justice away from just crashing and burning. Well, I mean, he, I mean, you know, there's communists on that bench. Kagan and Sotomayor, I mean, they're, their paths are chock full of leftist operations. I mean... Ginsburg came from the uh, ACLU. You know what I mean? This is just uh, it's <laughs> it's leftist leftist versus yeah. versus conservatives and a couple real conservatives. You know, so that's uh, the courts. You can't count on the courts. Look at Obamacare. Yeah, uh, the whole thing is uh, now. What else happened recently? That this sequester. Uh, has been going on. And, and by the way, I'm proud of the Republicans on the sequester. I'm glad they didn't. So what, man? We we lost 2% of growth. You know, I think what they ought to do is come right back and say, all right, we need to do another one of these, except we need to target it in the Department of Education and the Department of uh, Energy and, and things like that. And, and we could save even more and, and give them whatever uh, little trinket they want for that. But I think uh, we got an opportunity now. Uh, one of the things that they, they did and did not take responsibility for, Janet Napolitano had nothing to do with this, and the White House didn't have anything to do with it, uh, but apparently they decided, now you tell me that they didn't get a memo from the Obama White House and said release 2,000 illegal aliens. Oh, yeah. You know, that didn't come from, that came from the top. That's not something that just happens. Well, no, here's my question. How, with sequester, would that impact illegal aliens? Because that should have already been budgeted. So that's not a growth. It's only a growth if you keep them. That's what I don't if, understand about anything. If you take these it illegal aliens and you deport them back where the hell they came from, then you don't have to feed them. You don't have, I mean, I'll cut a shitload out of the budget right quick, fast, and in a hurry. Hey, Joe Arpaio said he'd take them. Yeah. He said he put, Joe, them, he put them up in the GP larges. Damn right. He gave them some paint draws. But, yeah, the whole thing, I mean, them saying at TSA that if we don't hire the people we were going to hire, then your line is going to get longer. And I'm thinking, future hires are going to affect, are you that bad? 
Have you uh, managed it that poorly? That there's that many people getting ready to retire? You're only like 10 years old or however old TSA is. Too old. It should be disbanded. Should have been disbanded a long time yeah. ago. Uh, now, they're going a little stupid in, in uh, New York. I guess in New York, Grub Stubs, excuse me, the, the SNAP program, the nutrition and supplemental whatever the hell it is program, food stamps, apparently they got them for Scooby now too. Yeah, they <laughs> they, they have the only pet in New York. Foods, yeah, only in New York, the pet food stamps program. Now, here's my thing, okay? I have dogs. You have dogs. All right, here's the trick. If you have a dog, or a cat, or a bird, or whatever the piss it is. If you have a pet, you should be able to feed the pet. You decide you on getting a pet after you meet the basic needs of the humans. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you don't decide, well, you know what? I'm already on food stamps, but God, I need a dog. Yeah. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go get a get me a great big German Shepherd and, and and get food you know food stamps for the dog. That's ridiculous. And of course it's only in New York, you know, where the mayor just made it He's illegal to to sell two liter bottles of pop, or excuse me, soda. That's an unreal sugary drinks. Can we please well, get to get it right? Sugary drinks. Yeah. Uh, that's well, the here's new, the that's thing. The new... If, if anywhere in the country that I've been, and I've been pretty much all over the place, right? If you call and order a pizza, nine times out of ten, they say, hey, for an extra buck, we'll give you a two-liter bottle of pop, two-liter bottle of soda, whatever. All right, do that. In New York City, that's now illegal. That's unreal, man. This guy thinks he – I can't believe they put up with it. I mean, it must they must just not care, or they're just not going to listen to him. Or, it's, it's bizarre the things that man says. I mean, this dude, fact, this dude made smoking outside illegal in, in the park. I, I, it, it befuddles me that, that nobody just goes, hey, you know what, enough. Yeah. You, you know, it, here's the thing. I was uh, <laughs> a couple, I guess a couple years ago. I'm, I'm outside. I'm standing on a street corner and I'm smoking because you're not allowed to smoke in, in a building anymore or on the property. Shit, where you work, yeah. you're lucky you're allowed to smoke in the same block. Yeah, well, no, actually, you have to cross the street. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I did. And this woman comes up, and she's like, this is disgusting that I have to walk through your smoke. And I said, you know what, bitch? This is your fault. It's people like you that complained and bitched and fucking moaned that I have to smoke on the street corner, in the cold, in the rain, in whatever, just to make you fucking happy. It's unbelievable. So if you, don't, if you see me standing here, it's in your best interest to cross the street, Get the hell away from me because I'm a, I am just really don't like people like you. Let me tell you something. You know, of the you're, you're self-righteous. Yeah. And you're, uh, the, some of the secondhand ramifications of this more, of this stuff. I haven't been to a Pittsburgh Pirate game in two years because they banned it in, at PNC Park. You used to be able to go out away from people. I have no problem getting away from non-smokers. I have no problem with that whatsoever. I did it before it got unpopular. You know, I didn't smoke in a restaurant where there's people right there eating their food. I just didn't, never did that. But when they banned it from PNC Park, they lost thousands of dollars for me. The same way with a restaurant up the street that, that banned it. I haven't been back since. You know what I mean? That's fine. You want to do that? You want to you mess up my liberty? Okay. But I'm not patronizing your business anymore. It's like, the, it's like uh, in Connecticut. Is it Connecticut? Yeah, in Connecticut... The, the Connecticut, ladies and gentlemen, is where American freedom was built. That's where Ruger and, and uh, Marlin and Winchester, and that's where they all, Colt, where they all, Remington, that's where all the weapons were designed and built, was in New England. And they're going to pull the hell out of there. They're going to, the, the magazine company that makes the magazine that I showed on this show, the MPAG, MPAG, PMAG. That magazine company, which is the highest selling uh, 556 magazine, is being made, I think it's in Colorado, but it's in one of the states, or no, it's in Maryland, and they're going to leave Maryland, and Maryland has an employment problem. I mean, these people are nuts, and that's what I'm, I'm, I'm liking, Ward. I really am. I, I'm enjoying watching the free market battle back. I don't know if you've been paying attention to that, but they've really been battling back. They've been doing some things that... Uh, 
They've been banning sales to government agencies in states that won't let their citizens uh, carry arms, bear arms. Uh, you know, they won't sell it to New York State Police. They're not selling them anymore, AR-15s. They said, pound sand, you're done. We're not selling nothing to you anymore if you won't let your citizens carry them. Yep. See, that's the thing. Gun manufacturers, the ones that George Soros hasn't purchased up, are uh, very patriotic individuals, man. They know that their existence uh, hinges on the Second Amendment. You know, and they're uh, not afraid to say so. So that's good. It's good to see the free market reacting. And, and ladies and gentlemen, you need to use your wallet when you make decisions. Your wallet is a big part of your politics, believe it or not. I mean, you know, when I noticed, and I'm not telling everybody, buddy, you got to make your own decision. But I wouldn't own an American car. There's no way in hell that I'm going to spend the two or $3,000 that comes off the top of the price of a brand new American truck because I, I drive four-wheel drive pickup trucks. And I know that a slice of that's going to the United Auto Workers one way or another. One way or another, that money's going to end up in the Democrat hands. I've had Toyotas for the last three trucks. I wish I could buy a Ford, but I'm just not, I'm not prepared to fund them like that. Anyway, uh, the last story of the evening, Ward, is kind of weird. I mean, uh, Janet Jackson got in the news here, and, and uh, I think this is credible. I mean, if you look at if you look at some of the pictures of the way she dressed, she's changed. Yeah, apparently she's revealed that she married her billionaire Qatari boyfriend, Wesom Al Mana, last year. <laughs> and so, uh, and she's come out in the open in the wake of numerous reports of her impending lavish and extravagant wedding in Doha. Following her pedophile brother Michael's footsteps, Jackson has reverted to the religion of pedophilia, Prophet Muhammad. Already, we can see signs of her sexy attire becoming more oppressively Muslim-like. Now, if you go on the show notes links page, which I created a new one, I stopped at 110 and created a page two. Uh, if you go to that story, that's from Bare Naked Islam, right? Yeah, I believe so. Oh. Yes. Okay, I hope the link's on there, because it ain't on here. Uh, anyway, you can see pictures of her all dressed in, uh, like she's covering everything, man. It's just not the same old, same old Janet Jackson. Man. She's she's definitely a... Uh, she was she was at her best when she was slutty. Yeah, she was. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Call it a pig a pig, dude. The, the, the headline of the story is kind of interesting. Janet Jackson secretly converts to Islam and marries her billionaire Arab Muslim slave master. So we'll see how long that lasts. Uh, I wonder how long it'll it'll be uh, all jelly beans and donuts over there uh, when when they make her put the the full hijab on with the eye slits. That'll be uh, well, you know what? She can she probably already has one because in that story, Michael Jackson uh, used to hang out there and incognito. He'd wear that shit. Yeah, he had his own burqa. Yeah, so she could just probably yeah. use his. And he said that, you know, that that's how he would travel incognito. He'd put a burqa on and, and pretend he was a woman. And, I mean, back in the day, those two were kind of interchangeable anyway. You know, you didn't really know which was which. Yeah. That was a bizarre family. Yeah, you I mean, think? I mean, you and I, because we grew up when we were kids. I remember being in fourth grade, and Michael Jackson was like a regular little black kid. You know, he was like singing ABC and all that stuff and, and looking normal and had an afro and, you know, had a bunch of brothers and. It just got went downhill from there, man. He got up into the thriller and started started working on that face. <laughs> yeah, I mean, between all the man. plastic surgery he had, and then he 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 was bleaching his skin oh, or something. God. I mean, by the time he was by the time it was all said and done, he was like gray. It was weird, man. And and I remember when he was a kid, he could have had any girl he wanted. I mean, they were they were head over heels worse than the Beatles. I mean, this guy just had the following, and he he just. Uh, Started manipulating stuff. I don't, he ended up being like a monster at the end, and I guess he was on all those drugs and everything else. Yeah, I mean, Shame. you're shooting profanol and just, you know. Well, well ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's going to about wrap it up. Uh, send us an email at scrtv at live.com. Uh, visit the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Resistance. A lot of people uh, have input there, mainly Ward, but I get on rants myself every now and then. 
and, and please come like the page. I mean, we're, we're almost at 100. We're at like 97, I think. Yes, we are. Uh, 97, exactly. Go to the uh, website, steelcityresistance.wordpress.com. I think there's actually a thing there where you can recommend us to your friends. Do that. Do that. We, yeah, we, we get, need some get, more get listeners. Get some more of your friends involved, even if they don't like, you know, if, if especially if they're like a big lefty. Yeah, they can send us hate mail. Exactly, we're all for that. Yeah. Now you can download the show on iTunes. The show is surrounded in Pittsburgh: colon, Steel City Resistance. Uh, we had to change that up and got the ranking up a little bit, and that seemed to work. So uh, you can check it out on Stitcher. Uh, I can't think of anything else. Word. Um, Thank you for letting us into your lives for one hour each week. You got anything for the Nation Ward? No, sir. I'm over and out. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thanks again, and we will catch you next week.